Hey everyone and welcome to the call. My name is Jana Garcia and I'm a Diamond Ambassador with Flexus Worldwide and I have a very special guest on the call tonight and uh, her name is Kathleen Hepler and Kathleen is a brand new diamond and I'm so excited I get to interview her tonight and I have so many fantastic questions to ask you Kathleen and I know it's going to be fabulous because you are fabulous and congratulations first of all on going thank diamond. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We've been celebrating big time uh, with you and for you and we're just so happy for your journey and so I'm really glad to have you on the call and i um, looking forward to hearing some of your answers tonight. But first of all, uh, can you tell everybody like where you're from? Because we don't live local to each other. No, I know it. Jana, as you guys all know, is down in Texas. I'm, my name is Kathleen Hepler and I am lit. I live in a little tiny town called Clinton, New York, which is nowhere near New York city. It's a complete other section. We're way up in the very center of the state, which is right in between Albany and Syracuse. We're right in between there, right dead center in the state. A lot of green, a lot of small towns, not anything like a big city. So, yeah. um, it, just as a as a, just a typical mom in a typical little city, just like a lot of you guys are. So, like I always thought, New York was this really small state, and you you know you're like right next to New York City wherever you live. But I have learned my geography some since having a team in New York that you guys are like hours and hours apart from each other. Some of you that live in New York, so I guess I really underestimated the size of that state. Right. I mean, they say that the population of New York is a, about the same as the population of Florida. And obviously a great deal of it is down there, but I live like four and a half hours away from New York City and about 45 minutes from Syracuse. So no, it's right in the center, little teeny town. So Wow. That's cool. I bet it's really pretty. It is. Tons of green. We live, our little town is very old school, very old fashioned, very Aww. sweet. It's it's great. I love it. And we I grew up here and my husband, I met my husband in high school and we grew up here. And that's just where we're going to stay. And the, my kids, high, my kids school is right behind our house and it's just perfect. So, um, but yeah, I'm a mom of four little, little ones. And I started about two years ago in January. And at the time they were two, four, five, and seven. Yeah. So living in our little town and our little kids and they go bike ride and everything. It's, it's perfect. Just perfect. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you are like super busy. And <sighs> so kind of give us a little bit of like background to when you, what, what your life was like before Plexus and how you got in, introduced to it. Okay. Um, well, I have a background in education. I have a degree as a special ed teacher, a degree as a speech therapist, and what they call a CAS for administration, which means that um, I could be a principal or a school director, something like that. So three degrees after high school. And I was just driven that way, and I knew that I wanted to help people, and obviously as um, being a teacher, that's pretty much what you do. So I was a teacher for a long time and decided I was going to go um, stay home for a little bit and have some babies and have four. So, um, but once that fourth one came and she, I have two boys, two girls, we became really busy and we've always been very budgeted. And my husband works for the government. So we we're very budgeted and very, um, we just follow routines. That is our thing. Um, so we just plugged along like every typical family does. And once my daughter was about two years old is when I, everything started to hit. Cause I knew at that time, baby weight, I can't say that I still have baby weight cause she's two. Um, and I should have the energy because she's, she's, you know, no longer a little baby anymore, but I just didn't, I was in a funk and I didn't realize it. I was, didn't really want to play. I kind of watched them play and I just did the mom things that, and put on that fake smile that I know a lot of my mom friends did um, because you just kind of walk through life and saying, all right, I've kind of given up me for the sake of the family. I've given up me for the sake of my kids and I would not give that up for the world. But um, I knew that there was something 
I wasn't giving my hundred percent to anything. So at one time I started watching uh, my upline, Christine posting a lot about uh, on Facebook about um, Plexus and pictures and pictures of a lot of people that I'm now friends with, which is great. Uh, but in a very weak moment, very selfish, what I thought at the time was really selfish moment to say, yes, I'm on a budget and, but man, I got to do something because this is not a way I want to live. So I bought a bag, didn't tell anybody, <laughs> didn't tell anybody, not even my husband. So, and we budget and I budgeted mentally for it. So once I did that and I tried it for a couple of days and within a week I had energy, I was happy, I felt great and five pounds gone, I felt fantastic. So I immediately signed on as the budget minded person to say, I got to get it cheaper. So that's what I did. Still didn't tell anybody. So as that yellow person, I wanted, I figured, okay, I just wanted to get rid of the weight. I had no idea what it would do for me internally, what it would do for me health wise. And so once I started doing that, I jumped on the bandwagon to say, okay, I can help others. I can do this and help others. So at the time, again, I was a stay at home mom. Um, so um, I started feeling really good and people started to realize that because they knew that it was coming from a true, true hearted place. Um, fast forward a couple months, uh, the people started recognizing that yes, it does help and they started to join me. And since I felt so good, I've been like, I can conquer anything. I can do anything I want. So I went back to work. I'm like, sure, I can do this. So I went back into the self-contained special ed class, which was great. And from starting January 2014 until I started back in school in September, 10 months in is when I hit Emerald. So this whole business started going and I just kind of rode this wave. And we'll talk about that a little more later, but um, it, when I was teaching was when I really started to, um, the business started to build. So doing full-time mom, full-time homemaker, manager, full-time teacher, full-time plexus, it was, it was a lot and, but it was doable. I'm still standing and it was doable. So so do you remember what actually drew you in that Christine was posting? Was it something about, was it a before and after? Was it watching her post many things or, you know, do you remember that what it was that drew you to Plexus? I definitely remember. And the people that I talk to now all the time saying, you guys did this. It, um, they were the pictures. They were the pictures of people that, that the before and afters in their stories thinking I could be that person. I could be an after. That's what I kept thinking. The, and I kept saying to myself, I'm in the before, but I knew that I had an after. That was it. So thank you to all of you guys that of uh, Mandy and Cheryl and Liza and, and all of you guys, thank you for your pictures and sharing your stories because it made my life completely different. So thank you. So when you were at first taking the products and then you decided to sign up as an ambassador, what what brought you to the point after that that you thought maybe you could fit the business side into your life considering you were so busy working full time? What what made you think? Was it because you thought you could post on Facebook and you could do it around? What What was the reason why and what brought you to that point? I never really thought about I mean, yes, everybody leads, leads busy lives. Everybody does. I mean, our lives are packed from the moment you your feet hit the floor in the morning until you drop at night. And everyone's that way. I don't think I'm extra busy with the four kids or the, the everything else going on, but it's how you approach it. That's my theory that, all right, I knew that I had a minimal amount of time. So I used other tools other than being on Facebook all the time and it actually actually getting away from this computer is a huge deal um, but I did use things like buffer and tiny torch because the information that's provided on your customer page or on your personal page that's great information and you don't physically have to be there at that time to post it use that as a tool I used it all the time because there are people that I may be 
um, done and gone and gone to work in the morning when people are first waking up and they may not have seen a post that I posted. So to time it just right for other people to see it was perfect. I loved that tool. So I used that a great deal of talking about um, product information, ingredients, to, um, in testimonies, those kinds of things. So definitely I used that. And then at night I posted again, those kinds of things. So I posted a great deal still, even though I was working. And even though I couldn't touch a computer because I was teaching all day, uh, but it's talking to people. That is it. That was it. It's sharing stories. That's what this whole network business is about, is actually getting from away from the computer and actually having conversations with people and sharing in person. That was the biggest thing because people can only read so much by typing it, by reading a text. But if you're actually speaking to someone with physical movements and excitement in your voice, in your tone, that made the biggest difference. So whether you have two minutes or two hours a day, you can find people to talk to. Everybody goes to the grocery store, everybody goes shopping here, there, and everywhere, and everyone has friends that you wanna chat with. So there is nothing holding you back from chatting with people about it because it's all in your perspective. If you hide behind it and not tell people, I feel bad for those people because you're giving them a gift of health. So rather than saying, well, I'm kind of embarrassed, I'm trying to sell something. Well, yeah, that's not gonna get you anywhere. But if you go at it saying, do I have something that could help you? See, there's, it's just the difference in how you talk to people. So whether you have two minutes or tw two hours, it doesn't matter. So did you, did you, would you say you built most of your business off of Facebook or do you think you built it mostly on Facebook if you had to weigh the difference? Um, I think a great deal of it were the connections made. Um, a lot of the strong um, parts of our team were made from relationships that I had in the past. So I have a great deal of friends from, from college that I hadn't seen in a really long time. Um, Aaron and Karen and a whole bunch of friends that I hadn't seen in so long, but we're still friends on Facebook. So even though that, yeah, it built from there, it's building a connect, reconnecting with them that actually did it. That definitely so, was it. So connecting with them online, but then taking it offline to really communicate that part of it. Absolutely. So, so you know, we, we talk a lot about customer groups and we train to do customer groups, you know, if you want one, if that's something you, that you desire. But we, we talk a lot about how customer groups can hold you back or they can help you a lot. Uh, we've had great success with customer groups, and I know yours is is been very beneficial to you. Um, what are some ways since you have been in the company for two years? What are some ways that you've kept your customer group fresh and not to where people are turning off their notifications and maybe that they don't see it anymore? What what kind of things do you do to make sure your customer group is still working all these months later? Well, I will tell you a couple of the mistakes that I've made. First of all because I, my customer group did work really, really well for me because I felt that that whole um, close-knit group of even though there was a couple thousand people in there, but that close-knit group that I can share tons of things about um, ingredients and what they do and people actually saw that on a regular basis. So that definitely helped in seeing all the testimonies and that kind of thing. But I am here to tell you for everyone that is here, don't hide behind that. I did because I thought, oh, it's safe. I'm getting customers. It's wonderful. Don't hide behind that. And that's what I did because I was that person that said, oh, what are people going to think? Ugh. Oh, my God. Once I stopped that, of oh, what are people going to think? Everything went away because people are going to think positive and negative no matter what you do. And thinking in your head, it's not about me. What they think is about them. If they don't believe it, if they think it's a scam, yeah, you can try to talk with them and give them the reality. But 
it doesn't bother me. Once you get that part out of your mind, you start giving the information in your customer group is wonderful. But branching out and, and living it in on your own page and in life, that is a big deal. So but back to the customer group, I really like that because people go there and they feel a little safer that they could share, that they could um, share their successes. Um, in that group as well, but I really like that for providing a lot of the um, the specifics of what the products do. That's a big deal. And then the the business part, I did a lot more on my personal page. Right. So, like, I I see your customer group as being um, very successful because of things that you've specifically done. So, like, when you're training somebody, as as when I do, if if I see somebody that could have a successful customer group, they have to put a lot of, you had a lot of people in there and you continually added people in there. So if you sponsor somebody that maybe has 150 or 200 Facebook friends, you probably tell them to post, you know, on their regular wall, just as much as in their customer, if they do want to have a customer group, because I mean, the way I see it, people, I think, get hindered by their customer group if their audience isn't big enough. And so I think that's kind of what you feel too, because you do have so many people in your customer group and you're constantly adding to it and you're constantly posting in it. So, I mean, don't you agree that there's, there's things that you have to go by to have a successful customer group. And, and if you're not willing to do those certain things or don't have the capacity, then you probably should just go ahead and post on your regular wall. Absolutely. And one of the, the my favorite story, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you've heard this story before, Jana, but um, when I first started, I was told put everybody on your, everyone that you're friends with put on your group. So that's what I did. I started putting them one at a time, one at a time. And then a couple days later, um, I went back, put made sure everybody was in it because I wanted to make sure a couple days later did the same thing. And I didn't realize that every time I did, I kept putting with this one, I'm probably a few people back in that have removed themselves. I didn't know that. I really didn't. So I kept putting this one particular person back in the group. And finally, this person messaged me saying, what are you doing with that? What are you adding me to you? I took myself out three times and you keep putting me back in. And so it sparked up a conversation. I started talking about it. And within a week, this person joined my team and fast forward two two years later she's going to be a diamond ambassador very very soon so <laughs> this was my friend Erin O'Keefe I'm sure everybody knows so don't discount the whole moral of the story is don't discount the people that take themselves out they take themselves out for because they don't know because they're scared because they are unsure of what you're doing. So if they take themselves out like that, there's a reason. Ask them. And there's no harm in that. Say, hey, I saw that you took yourself out of my group. I just want to let you know that this is what I'm doing. And let them walk away with a, knowledge, a knowledgeable, knowledgeable mind rather than fear, apprehension, those kinds of things. So. Um, definitely rule of thumb, definitely add everybody to your group and go back even a year in, go back everybody again. Because if nothing else, if you've been in this for a month, six months, two years, the people are still watching. I still to this day, just two days ago, had a friend message me and said, okay, now I'm ready. And she had, I've known her way before I started Plexus. So she's been watching me for two years and they just weren't ready at that time. And that's okay. So I'm here and that's what I keep telling people. I'm going to be here for the next two, 10, five, 15 years. So feel free to contact me when you're ready. I'll still be here. Yeah. And, and I agree. And I think that what you said earlier about the customer groups being a good place to do product education and uh, things that you wouldn't normally maybe put on your wall. But, you know, I love the customer group. I feel like that it's very beneficial. But like you said, if people hide behind them, if they don't use them in the right way, then it can hinder their process. And I see it happen all the time. And then I see people that have really successful customer groups 
And those are the ones that do continue to post on their wall, but they also keep their customer group very active. I mean, we tell people it's like a store. I mean, you, you're you actually setting up a store if you're opening up a customer group and you want to keep that store like fresh with information all the time. You want to keep it very interesting and fun and a place where people want to keep coming back and looking. I mean, Rod has a funny story. He had uh, one of his friends said, he worked with him at the time and he, and he saw him at work and he said, um, you know, th that customer group that you have, it's very annoying and it's, you know, it's getting on my nerves. And, and Rod said, well, then take yourself out of it. And he said, no, but I like seeing the before and afters. I might want to buy soon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He, he ended up buying and becoming a customer. But, you know, people, they say those things, but they're drawn in just like you were. They're drawn in by the before and afters. But keeping it fresh, if you if you let your customer group go and you don't post in it regularly, it's like having a store with nothing in it. And people yeah, are I was just chatting with a friend of mine to, actually today, mm -hmm. and she was talking about um, – having that fear of posting too much on her customer group. So she did a lot, a lot, a lot. And then she backed off for a little bit. And then she said, you know what, forget it. What am I doing? And so she started posting again and again. And she met with a friend of hers today and said, you know, I really was intrigued by all of your posts. And then I must have just walked away from it for a while or not saw it for a while. But just the other day, I saw a good one. So my girlfriend didn't want to tell her that, I didn't post as much, then maybe that's why you didn't see it, but people are sincerely watching. Even two years later, they're still watching. So right. don't feel that you're in a rut. Change things up. You never know exactly what's going to intrigue people because the fit in another story I had that I um, added who I thought was the fittest, most, this is before I knew all the wonderful things about the products and everything, the fittest person in the world. And I thought, oh, she's going to be offended if I put her in the group. But I put her in anyway, because that's what I should. She immediately messaged me and said, I have all of these horrific pains and my siblings have this. And she's helping her friends and her family and herself. So don't discount people just because of the way they look on the outside. You never know what's on the inside. Right. And I, I so agree. And, you know, we talk, the reason why I'm talking to you a lot about customer groups is because you have been so successful with yours and uh, in mine as well. I, you know, I, my customer group has been very beneficial to me, but one thing I do want to say is that after a certain amount of time, your customer group, you know, if, you, if you're not continuing to put people in new people all the time, your customer group can still be beneficial because you're you're showing your team what they can be doing and you're also showing your customers to you know to be motivated by the before and afters or by product you're also telling them product information and education of products they may not have thought to try yet so for me and also you're solidifying that you're an ambassador you're solidifying that this company is legit and you're not going anywhere right. so if you kind of back off they may think that, oh, yep, there goes another company come and gone. Right. But staying true to what you believe in is a big deal to people, especially right. up in the Northeast. Let me tell you, because up in New York in the Northeast, there, it, there it's a tough nut to crack. We're kind of str strict with what we do up here. So we're not easily swayed by things. So, uh, but once they, once people believe, they believe with all their heart. So for those that are in, um, up in this area and they think, oh, it's tough and people don't believe me, just keep plugging because that's what we do up here. We just keep shoveling and shoveling. So eventually that driveway will be clear and people will believe you eventually. So keep going with it. Right. Absolutely. So working full time and having four little kids. What kind of things did you do on your journey as you were growing your business? Like at what point did you know this was for real? And how did you grow such a large business while you were working full time as a teacher? That was kind of tough. Other than um, we said before the posting in the morning and getting that all set for the week. But my kids in, in the beginning, I realized, I thought, man, I, it, it was stressful. It was very stressful. But I knew that there was something. I knew in the long run we would all be better off. So 
keeping that I always say keeping that end zone in mind was the part that got me to this point because yes I was working like a dog and trying to keep everything in balance and it was hard but now and I, I'm on the other side now 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 I'm a stay-at-home mom I worked for one year and in the middle of it all I said okay the amount that I am making the amount that I will be making is twice the salary of my superintendent and that was my goal like my, financially my goal is met and my heart is in teaching my heart is special needs children and so now even better which is the coolest thing I go back to that same school and I walk in there at least once twice a week and volunteer with the children that I worked with before and now I don't have the meetings and I don't have all of that stuff I could just actually do what I love and actually help kids and on top of that now I can help adults which is even better because now I can help them be healthy help them get financial freedom as well so yeah it was tough but it looking at the long run and budgeting your time and making what we call the IPAs, income producing activities and setting my list up the night before. Before I went to bed, I had my little notebook, still do. I always have at least one, if not five, um, of things that I need to do. And I just put it all on paper. And the next day, I can follow up with that person or just make a quick phone call, even if I'm finishing up a snack in the middle of school or right after school. So it's all about prioritizing. It's just prioritizing. And my kids are definitely better off for it. And yeah, it was tough. But while I'm cooking dinner, doing homework, following up with a phone call, I would do it all again in a heartbeat. Yeah. And, you, you know, just from knowing you, I, I know you're really good at time management. And uh, I had to ask you the other day, like, how much time do you spend on Plexus a day? And I think you told me about five hours now. Which yeah, and now it's now it's completely because back then it was working one on one with with customers, one on one with a few people on my team, and that part was easier because then I only had a specific amount of time. You only can do what you can do. So if during that day I only talked to two people rather than on my list I had five. Okay, then there's tomorrow. But at least I did two. You, I always had, you have to do at least one to two things with this company, with this business. Because it's a really, it's a business. It's not a hobby. So if I always tell my friends that are ambassadors, this is a money-making business that you're also doing wonderful things to help people because if you only wanted it for the product you would still be a customer but you're doing it as an ambassador because you want to change financially for yourself and you want to tell a lot more people about it a lot easier so there's nothing wrong with saying yeah this is a money-making business and it's serious so take it seriously and I certainly did so you only can do as much as you can do so I made it a goal that I have to speak with at least two to three people a day if I got to more, I got to more. Um, but now being at home, now this is my full-time job. So now it's a great deal of helping whole teams of people and motivating teams of people. And, but still talking with people, talking with those skeptics that I that are still watching from the sidelines. Uh, so it's still talking with at least two or three people a day about the business they don't know about it because there's tons of thousands of them. Right. But, you know, the freedom that we have, um, you know, you say it's full time, but you're still you're still working part time because you're able to schedule things around what you what you want to do. And I mean, for me, that's complete freedom. And to be able to make the amount of money that we can make as diamonds and as jewels, it's just it's such a complete freedom. I mean, to be able to think that two years was all it took for you to get there and all the degrees that you have that you, you know, were so limited and there was a cap on how much you could make. Now there's oh, yeah. a cap. So, you know, for people not to go for this and to, I mean, what does your, what does your future of your family and, and the freedom that you guys now have, 
what does that look like for you now as compared to two years ago? Um, honestly, it two years ago, we were fine. We were typical and it was okay. And we figured we would make it. Um, I can't even, I can't even tell you. It's, um, we don't have debt. We, our kids, their college is okay. We're set. And retirement, we're set. Who would have thought that? If I'm 40, I'm 40 and I'm home working like a dog still because that's, I don't know any different. So I still work five hours a day at least on this, but I can take time off if my kids are sick. I can drop everything if I need to do something else for the family or whatever. The freedom of it is amazing. The stress level is so is gone and things if we had discussions about anything it was usually about money or if we can afford things we don't talk about that much at all anymore um so the change is it it's still a shock because that first diamond paycheck came out just what yesterday that was a shock but and every day i think this is is this really a this is really I, so I'm still in that shock mode, but future for the family is something I was not prepared for. We had a budget and a plan and at 40, our plan is much different now. But. So like, I know that your team right now is, has so much momentum and so it's not just you that's succeeding. You have a whole line of people that are coming up and, and they are blowing it out of the water. And so uh, what would you say to people who, I mean, I know you probably have people on your team that come to you and say, you know, I'm not growing as fast as so-and-so, or, you know, I, I'm discouraged because I don't have the kind of momentum that this lake does. What do you tell people that come to you if they're discouraged and they want, they really want to go all in, but they need, help and they need advice and everyone has it on their teams and our team when we first started we had this drive and momentum that I thought everyone did we didn't know any better so when we started no one had heard of it up in New York hardly at all so when we started it was new to everybody and it just kind of rolled and rolled and I, honestly, we had we didn't know any different. We just thought that's the way everybody did it. But um, so, and we do have some phenomenal rock stars on our team. I can't. It, it's too long to name because, and it's those people that made the momentum. It's those people that we all have this passion for the products, and passion for the company, and passion with ourselves. Those are the three things that did it. Um, the product, everyone, had, I say this a lot, but everyone has the same products. We all do. We all have the same compensation plan that we could talk about with people. But the difference is what you say to people and how you say it. That's the difference. So it's the momentum was created because of the belief in the company, the belief in the products, and the belief in the compensation plan, the belief in ourselves. So that was the biggest thing. So for people to say, oh, we, I'm not growing as fast as so-and-so, you cannot compare people at all. You can't compare their journey with others. It's, it's not fair to yourself, and it just brings yourself down. So only keep yourself, me focused, and say, all right, I am going to build this myself. And the only person that can change the momentum on their team is me. So I'm going to take the bull by the horns and turn around and say this, the power of three that we talk about a great deal is there for a reason because it works. We've talked about all of these things so often and shockingly because they really do work. So talking with your team and actually just going up, Having them speak to three to five people a day, it's just that simple to say, hey, I have these fantastic things, the fantastic products that could help you, your family, and I would love for you to try them. 
It's just that simple. It really is. So, and if people come at with negatives or objections, think about it. Think of where, why they're saying the objections and where they're coming from. Because nine times out of ten, as we said before, it comes from fear or unknown. They're objecting it because they don't know what fabulous products we have. So thinking about where they're coming from is a big deal. But so again, going back to that, you were saying um, with momentum that if you feel that you don't have it, sit back for a minute and think, why not? And look at your team and think, what are the blocks that are that my team, if you, if you have a team, what do they have? What what's lacking? And most often it's the passion and the belief. That is the biggest thing. So if they don't have the belief in themselves, then let's build it. Let's make it. And so tell them, you can do this. You have people at work you could talk to. You can, it, those kinds of things. Um, a lot of times people will come to me and say, I don't have anybody else. I'm tapped out. I got nobody else to talk to. Talk to everybody at work. Talk to everybody in my neighborhood. And I'm done, which is not true at all. And I could tell you, especially in the Northeast, that I could go sincerely down the street, three, four, five houses down, and they don't know, even though I'm driving that Lexus, and I see them in the street every now and again, they still don't know because I didn't talk to them about it. There are people everywhere. Go to the grocery store. Go to the makeup counter. Go anywhere and just bring it up. So the momentum is created solely by you creating it, you building it and just go out and be bold because who cares if they say no, go to the next person or say, why not? That's what I always do. I really don't ever really stop at the no. I'm like, well, why not? Yeah. Why don't you like, yeah. why are you saying no? So <laughs> finding out why is a big deal. Right. Well, and we say all the time that the speed of the leader is the speed of the team. And so um, if you're in momentum, it's because if your team is in momentum, it's because you have been in momentum. So one thing I wanted to ask you is that uh, you have these degrees and you went to college for a really long time and you got really, really educated. But how much in the last two years do you uh, give credit for your success to personal growth that you've done on yourself just within the last two years? Like, how important has that been to your success? Seeing that you were already a very educated person, what did, what what led you to success as far as self growth goes? That honestly, it's kind of funny because of how many years? Eight years of college education, and I'm not using those degrees, but I think I kind of am in some in some aspect. But mainly in the last two years. I have learned more about myself than I have from any textbook I could have ever picked up because I learned in those eight college years of how to teach others, how to teach children and speech therapy, especially those kinds of things. But in the past two years, I put more in myself. And I, uh, Debbie Sullivan, one of the um, trainers that we had had um, throughout these past this past year, um, when I first started, I kept thinking that I was very selfish. And um, Liza had said this as well with her, that it's not selfish. It's, so, it's self-focused. Once I realized that, I think that's where the tipping point was, that I did this business and didn't really know what I was doing for a while. Like, I know a lot of you guys feel that same way too. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, everyone's doing it. So I'm just going to keep going. I did that for a while. And then I started to pick up those um, the network marketing books or uh, self-motivating books or even picking, picking up the Bible again. I hadn't done that in a while. And just stop and be, again, that self-focused. And got out of, and I say this a lot, but I got out of my own way. Instead of that rat race of getting the kids here, there, and everywhere, going to work here, there, and everywhere, stop for just a minute and look at the next two years 
do you want to be on this rat race for the rest of your life? Or do you want to just stop for a minute and say, what can I do that's different? And when I did that, that's when things changed because I said, oh my God, this is something special. This company, this business and where I am is really special. So I'm going to make the most of it. And I don't really care what other people think because I know how special it is. That moment was in everything changed. And that's when things really got serious because all of those, I had books on being influential, um, go, get it, go to know, and all of those things to say, it's okay when people say no. And this is how you actually speak to people so that they are intrigued and listen. And this is how you ask questions of people so that they can, um, th so we can figure out what, what we can do to help them. Once that came to me, then that's when everything changed. Right. And, and I, I totally agree with the growth thing. And, you know, we provide all kinds of training in our groups and leaders on our team that do calls. And, you know, those things are so important for self growth and for getting to where you want to be. So if anyone, you know, is starting now or they feel like they're stuck they just like you said they need to stop and they need to educate themselves and grow themselves before they can get to the point where they are leading with momentum and you know it's so important to be on these calls and that's why we post them everywhere and that's why we tag people in them and you know you're not going to know everything that you need to know unless you plug in and you know, it's, it's the people that are self-motivated that can do those things and listen to their upline and duplicate what the successful people are doing. And, you know, everyone that's on this call right now is, is you know, I'm, I'm so happy that there's so many people that come on these calls because they learn so much. I mean, that's what I did to learn. I just would get on uh, YouTube and look at Tanya Dudley videos or then I started reading the books like what you're talking about. GoPro was huge for me, a big eye opener when I read GoPro because Eric Ori actually came and spoke with us at Leaders Retreat 2013. And and I became a huge fan because did you not know that? He actually No. Yes. And that's when we first got introduced to his book. And so from then on, I had every new ambassador that came on to read that specific book or listen to it. I listened to it and I read it. And it was such a quick read. It was something that was so easy to do. And it's one of those books where the, the first time you read it, you're just like, wow, why isn't everyone doing this? And it makes you really want to get out there and tell people about it so that they can have the same freedom. And it just kind of introduces you to network marketing in general. And I really like him. I follow everything he does and I watch all of his webinars and I really think it, he has great, great ideas for network marketing, but anything you can do to uh, grow your business through your self growth or through books or through YouTube videos calls that we do, uh, we do training calls all the time and if you can be present on those you can learn so much and I will tell you the name of the book in just a minute or somebody else will in the chat we're gonna answer some questions in just a minute but I wanted to ask you one last thing uh, what what kind of future do you see with the plexus with your own journey with your team's journey with somebody who uh, maybe just signed up today what, what kind of hope do you see for somebody like that and for all of our futures in the company in general going from here forward? Well, honestly, coming from that traditional family, traditional background, teacher, my whole family were either, they're police officers, teachers, we're very um, traditional type of a family, that when I left and came to this I think a lot of explosions happened in my family said <laughs> because this was so foreign to to me to a lot of people. So but what I would say for the future network marketing is the future. It it is. So taking the those traditions, yes, that's wonderful. Te uh, believe me, I am the first person to say that being a teacher was one of the best things I've ever done. But for the future, for our families, network marketing is the future. 
and direct sales marketing, it, it, that's the way, this is going to be the way to go. And I've met um, Tarl and Alec many, many times, uh, which is kind of weird to say that. I really have, and their, their approach to this company is different than any other direct sales company I have ever seen. They are so transparent, so honest, so true, so self-giving of everything where, um, that they, there is no doubt in my mind that what they do is from the heart. And that's why they always say we are one plexus, one team for a reason, because they want to be different. They don't want to be the typical direct sales company that um, their compensation plan would would put other people against each other. That is not the way that this company is. So the future of this company is astronomical. We're plexus worldwide for a reason. Just think. We are only United States and Canada and New Zealand and wait till we explode and they're doing it specifically in such a strategic way because they want to do it the right way. They want to go into all of these countries the right way and be welcomed in rather than push their way in, which other companies have done. So thinking about that, I have goosebumps just thinking about the future of that company. So if you're just starting today, you are not too late because I guarantee you go three doors down. They've never heard of Plexus before. If you started two years ago and you think, I don't have that momentum, then build it your damn self. Excuse my mouth. But because you can, I know I'm sorry, but because you can and why not? And so this company is only going to grow and expand and be worldwide why wouldn't you want to jump on that train and be as bold as you can be because if you're going at it with um with a weakened emotional state other people are going to look at you and see see that too so think of it this way that people that haven't heard of it i guarantee that everybody that you come in contact with they will try these products they will try something because it's the most natural product on the market and they want to feel better. And all of the products and junk that we eat and things that we put in our system, they want to feel better and have energy like we do at what time is it? East coast It's probably 10 o'clock and I still am like this. I know, but <laughs> they want to feel this good. So if you look at it as a point of that person's going to purchase a Plexus product and feel great, am I going to be the one that gives it to them or is somebody else? Because somebody will. Do you want it to be somebody else or do you want to be the person? I always say this too, that I don't hope and pray that someone buys the products and say, oh, please let this work. A, it's going to work. And I don't say, oh, I hope and pray and say, oh, thank you for buying it. I say, you're welcome because you're going to feel fantastic. So you're going to thank me once you try them. So you're welcome. So going at it from that mindset it's just, it's wonderful and it feels so good and you're going to make others feel good too. So getting out of your own way and actually being passionate about it, that's the only difference from someone purchasing products and joining you than joining somebody else. Right. And I have people tell me all the time, well, you know, you just got in it at the right time because, you know, my third year anniversary is coming up in April and, you know, I say, that is so not true. We have people on our team that are still progressing and moving really, really fast. I mean, we have obviously a lot more people now that are doing that. And so, but we still have states that haven't even been touched yet with Plexi. It's, it's so exciting. It's like, it's so, it's so new where you are, but even though it's been here for longer, I still meet people every day that have either not heard of it or they say, you know, I've heard of that, but I have never tried it. And so, like you said, it's it's for our responsibility to bring it to them. And if there are people in your company, I read this all the time in network marketing uh, books and audios and stuff. If there are people ranking up and progressing in your company, then there's no reason why you can't also. There is no reason why you can't. If one person's succeeding, there is no reason why you can't do it too. You just have to go see what they're doing and do that too and build belief and self-growth. 
And so you can better believe there's still people on that weekly leaderboard that are, that are blowing up this company. We still have plenty of people on our team that are ranking up. There will still be lots and lots of new people that go to Hawaii this year, and they will qualify by July on our team or on other teams. So if they are doing it, why not you? There is no reason. Me and Kathleen, we're very normal per people. We're different. She had three college degrees. I don't. But I was a stay-at-home mom. She was a teacher. But normal people do this. But the difference is how strong is your why? How much do you want this? Do you want to do it? Then get in there and do it. Like Kathleen said, there's just no excuse that you can do it with a full-time job. You can do it as a stay-at-home mom. It's been done in every single career. It's been done in every single personality type. It's been done in different locations across the country and other countries. If they can do it, you can do it. There is no reason why you can't. And there's no magic fairy dust on any of us to say, oh, they did it because, believe me, I am the absolute typical mom you can ever imagine. I would take my kids to the library and those kids, I am the typical mom. And the only difference is that I said that exact thing that, why not me? I can, I'm going to, because I go at everything with, I'm going to do this and do it the best that I can do or I don't bother doing it at all. So go at it with that perspective. And oh my gosh, it's so doable. And there's so much room in Hawaii for everybody. I mean, we went to Hawaii. Ah! <laughs> and there's room next year for a whole lot more. And, uh, and it is so worth it for the life of your family and to pay those mortgage bills, the phone bills, Imagine the stress of your family because you said, why not me? It's so worth every second. Yeah, it's complete freedom. It is complete freedom. So that is all I'm going to, we're going to answer some questions in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and end the recording part of it. So you guys stay on and we'll answer the questions in just a second. But thank you so much, Kathleen. And no. I, congratulations. I love your story and I'm so happy and so thrilled for you. And I'm so excited that we've become great friends. And I mean, that's what this ends up being all about really is the relationship. So thank you so much for coming on the call and your information is invaluable and I'm sure everyone took away. Away, lots of great information and good tips. So uh, thank you so much. And I'm going to end the call now.